practice problem number eight a. Let n be the product of the ten smallest prime numbers. Explain why the prime factorization of n plus one must include a prime that isn't among the ten smallest prime numbers. Okay, the n is the product of the ten smallest prime numbers. Two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. N is a product of all these prime numbers. And n plus 1 cannot be divided by 2 because this one has to be an even number because there's a 2 in there. Cannot be divided by 2. And this one can be divided by 3, so n plus 1 cannot be divided by 3. And so on for every single component. For, for example, number 13. N can be divided by 13. N plus 1 must not be dividable, uh, divisible by 13 because it's 1 extra. So by going through every single component, you would know that N plus 1 cannot be divided by any single one of these. So there has to be, must include a prime that isn't among this list. B. Explain why there is not a largest prime number. That is, explain why there are infinitely many primes. So this one is a little hard to explain without part A. So with part A, we can always say that if we know all the prime numbers in the world, then we make a product of all the numbers, infinite of those, the big the big prime number, the biggest prime number that you know, then we can always have this product n plus 1 that would give you a new prime number that is bigger than all these components. Basically, then you have a new prime, then you add to the previous product, then you multiply another one. And then n prime becomes n plus 1, then you get yet a bigger prime number. So this process can go on forever. That's why there is not a largest prime number. It can just keep going up. There are infinite many primes.